Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Arjawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from Kuwait's Emir, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. His Majesty's cable of congratulations on the success of the Kuwaiti National Assembly elections. His Highness Sheikh Nawaf expressed sincere thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's noble sentiments and sincere wishes. The Kuwaiti Emir stressed that His Majesty's generous initiative and fraternal communication embody the strong historical ties between Kuwait and Bahrain. He wished His Majesty steady health and well-being and Bahrain further progress and prosperity under his wise leadership. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, in reply to His Royal Highness's congratulations on the success of the Kuwaiti parliamentary elections. His Highness Sheikh Nawaf expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness Prince Salman's noble sentiments and sincere wishes, and wished him good health and Bahrain further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty. King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first joint meeting between the legislative and executive authorities held virtually discussed the draft budget law for the fiscal years 2021 2022, which comes in conjunction with the Decree 70 for the year 2020. The meeting was chaired by the Speaker of the Representative Council, Fawzi Zainal, and was attended by the head of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh Al Saleh the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Finance Fiscal Balance, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salma bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Shura Council and Representative Council Affairs Minister Ghanem Al Bu'anein, along with the Deputy Chairman of both councils, the Chairpersons of the Members of the Committee on Financial and Economic Affairs of both councils. During the meeting, the Deputy Premier affirmed the government's keenness on the spirit of cooperation while discussing the budget, enabling the committees of the two councils to report their conclusions on the draft law, adding that the government's representatives would be present to respond to all queries in a clear and transparent manner. The Deputy Premier said that citizens and the government's sustainable services to them remain to be among the key elements of preparing the budget, which reflects the keenness of the legislative and executive authorities on the interests of the citizens, including education, healthcare, social services, housing, and aid to those in need. In a special statement to the News Center, the Minister of Health, Faiqa Al Saleh, indicated that the Pfizer vaccine is expected to arrive in the Kingdom of Bahrain before the end of the month, and that the National Committee for Vaccination is extensively working on ensuring the safety of these vaccines. In her speech, the Minister of Health confirmed that there are special equipment for transporting vaccines to the kingdom in a safe manner, in addition to special specifications and conditions for their storage and preservation. Minister Al Saleh affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen on ensuring the safety of the vaccine and that there will be no complications based on the kingdom's concern for the safety of its citizens and residents. The president of the Asian Football Confederation AFC and FIFA Vice President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa chaired the ASEAN Federation, the Asian Federation's 30th General Assembly meeting held virtually for the first time in the Federation's history. The meeting was attended by the President of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, the members of the Asian Federation's board, along with 47 representatives of Asia's national federations. Sheikh Salman affirmed that the spirit of solidarity and unity established a strong foundation for joint work over the last seven years, which, he said, assisted the Asian Federation in facing the effects of the corona pandemic. Sheikh Salman pointed out to the importance focusing on achieving success during these exceptional times, adding that the Federation's leadership displayed a strong spirit throughout the period, despite calls for the Federation to delay its games. Sheikh Salman expressed his full confidence that the future of Asian football will be bright Though he added that there will be more difficult decisions to be made due to the financial instability caused by the pandemic, he affirmed that all efforts are being made to stabilize the Federation financially through good governance and strategic expenditures, as is reflected in the balance sheet of the Federation along with its spirit of unity and solidarity. During the meeting, the application 
to include North Mariana Islands into the Federation as a full member was approved following a process that commenced in July 2009. The Federation approved the financial statements for the years 2019 and 2020, along with a number of changes to the Asian Federation's internal governance, which are intended to ensure the maintenance of the highest levels of governance and fairness. The meeting also included a minute of silence over the passing of the global football legend Diego Maradona, along with other great stars who passed away during the year. In an achievement that reflects the efforts of development and modernization, the General Directorate of Reformation and Rehabilitation, the RRI, won an award as the first correctional institution in the Middle East in implementing and complying with international health, safety and hygiene protocols against coronavirus. More details in this report. This international recognition reflects the level of performance and the ability to implement international standards, as this award is given to the institution that best applies precautionary measures, according to standards set by the French company Bureau Veritas, which specializes in international quality standards. The RRI is strictly committed to the precautionary and preventive measures and to implementing new mechanisms that maintain the health and safety of inmates. At the same time, it guarantees the optimal provision of services through the use of remote communication and virtual attendance to court sessions and medical appointments. Furthermore, all caters are regularly tested for COVID-19 and all the buildings and facilities are being disinfected on a regular basis. A field hospital has also been allocated to ensure the safety of inmates and awareness lectures are held to urge them to commit to precautionary and preventive measures, the most important of which is the use of face masks. New inmates are also tested and isolated before entering the institution to ensure their safety and the safety of the remaining inmates. This award, which is the first given to a Middle Eastern institution, reflects the dedication and commitment of the RRI to protecting the health and safety of all. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 1,601 with 133 recoveries, 183 registered new cases and two deaths. 98 of the new cases registered were for expatriates, 71 are contacts of active cases and 14 are travel related. The deceased were an 81-year-old female citizen and a 66-year-old male citizen. The ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urged everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces whenever possible.